Australia's top-selling SUV, Toyota's Land Cruiser Prado, has just been updated and now boasts refreshed interior and exterior styling and a host of new safety tech. But threats to its dominance are lurking with Ford's more affordable Everest intent on claiming an even greater share of the pie. Pricing aside, these diesel-powered four-wheel drives are quite similar in both specification and application. So we've brought a mid-spec example of each to Victoria's stunning high country where we'll pit them against one another on some of the region's most challenging tracks. Using the famous Dargo Hotel as a base for our exploration, we're tackling the infamous Billy Goat Bluff track, one of the steepest in Victoria, along with the iconic Blue Rag Range track which climbs to over 1,700 metres above sea level to offer panoramic views of the surrounding craggy peaks and densely wooded valleys. Given the difficulty of these tracks, it's recommended only experienced four-wheel drivers take them on using vehicles suitable to rugged off-road use, like the two on test. The Prado is mildly updated for 2018 with a new look front end, tail lights and bumpers, plus a refreshed interior. It also scores autonomous emergency braking, lane departure warning, radar cruise control and auto high beam on all automatic variants. The extra trimmings join a proven package and Toyota's carryover 2.8 litre four cylinder turbo diesel engine is now the only engine available in the refreshed Prado range. The Prado GXL's dedicated dual range driveline boasts a six speed auto and a suite of off-road driver aids, but it misses out on the adaptive suspension found on the top spec Kakadu. Ranger-based Everest features a 3.2-litre, five-cylinder turbo diesel engine that makes more power and torque than the Prado, but is also slightly thirstier. Without a long-range tank, the Everest's off-road range could prove an issue for some. The big Ford offers the choice of rear or four-wheel drive, the latter with dual-range gearing. The six-speed automatic transmission also offers a terrain management system to tailor the drive to the prevailing conditions, along with a number of off-road chassis assistants. Well, jumping from the Prado to the Everest, and it's immediately noticeable that the throttle is a lot sharper, which can make movement off-road a little bit precarious. You've got to be very gentle with your right foot. Of course, on road and on steep hills like this one, that short throttle kind of does come into its own and in combination with the strong Duratorque engine makes a meal out of hills like this. The other big difference when jumping between the Toyota and the Ford is the difference between hydraulic and electrically assisted steering. The steering in the Everest is certainly a lot lighter and more manageable and you get a lot less road shock coming back through the wheel. The Prado seems to have some just slightly superior ride quality to the Everest. It's a little bit firmer, but the damping to me seems spot on. And certainly off-road, it's still got the edge. It's also got a centre locking diff in addition to the rear locking diff. So that's uh, an extra point over the Everest there. One complaint I do have is that there's only one USB port in the front. Really in this day and age with so many devices, two is preferable. Also, the position of the cup holders, it's uh, at the bottom of the centre stack, right in front of all the four-wheel drive controls. The Prado GXL includes a solid equipment and infotainment checklist aimed at keeping family buyers comfortable and connected. There's also plenty of space in the back and improved towing, which now matches the Everest at three tonnes. Ford ups the ante where infotainment is concerned and also features a powered tailgate. It also adds front and rear parking sensors, but misses out on the Prado's three-zone climate control and cooled and heated front seats. It is, however, a little roomier, the seven-seater offering more passenger and cargo space, irrespective of configuration. After two days in Victoria's high country, it's clear that both these machines will get you and your family to some wonderfully remote spots like this in comfort and with ease. But differences have emerged, and we're not just talking about the $4,000 price premium. 
The Everest is well packaged, well priced and impressively capable while also taking city duties in its stride. However, the Prado's impressive fuel range, extra locking diff and superb ride on and off-road give it an edge for those wanting to head further off the beaten track, giving it the win here by a whisker.